Okay, today we're going to look at some of the histories of some of the churches in our area. And uh, just remember that sometimes they're very handy because they also have some uh, history perhaps of the community that they're in, the village where they exist. And sometimes there are lots of good pictures of people who are members of the church but that maybe you're looking for pictures of those people and uh, they're identified and a lot of times it's hard to find that kind of information. One of the first ones here we have is together called the West Grant Charge. Now this has changed, this was back in 1992 and that took in uh, Bagley, Patch Grove, and Mount Hope. Now Bagley and Patch Grove, of course, uh, they don't exist now. Mount Hope is in with a different group. And uh, we will be having an additional one. Uh, we found information just a while back. We're getting copied because it's a much thicker history of the three churches back a number of years and we will put, we'll be putting that into a, a, a notebook and so uh, we have that to look forward to and we'll be working on that. We have uh, also uh, with the Bloomington uh, Methodist Church from 2000 and that again uh, kind of updates us on things there. And one of the pictures that we have uh, that we'll show you here from uh, one of the books that we put out, history books, how it used to look there. There used to be steps going into the north side of the Methodist Church. And I remember for years used it uh, for groups of kids and so on or something concerned with what was happening in the church we would take their picture there on the steps. Well, since then, the entrance has changed uh, to a different side there. We have a lift or a way of getting up and down to the basement, which makes things very much handier for people there. Uh, not too long ago, I was privileged to receive a copy of the Zion Lutheran Church there from uh, Bagley. And at the time there, Luther Jacobson was the pastor when that came out. And again, they're, they're still keeping their church going. Uh, they're sometimes getting some members from other groups that are coming and utilizing the church there. So they're continuing on. And we wish everybody luck on the small churches. It's tough keeping going anymore. Uh, and we need to remember that churches give us a sense of values, uh, a compass to follow in life. And I think we want to try to keep that in mind uh, when we're thinking about various churches. Um, no matter what group we might belong to or if we belong to no particular group at all, uh, I think we all realize there's importance and that we want to see them go and we want to at least have a history of what they did in the past. We have uh, the Bloomington uh, Methodist Church again. We have a separate thing here of the, in 2007, 150 years, and again showing uh, some of the older and later looking uh, uh, churches there. So that's kind of handy too. And then moving on, we have uh, from St. Mary's, uh, it's a smaller booklet which deals with uh, the second church when that was put, uh, built there in the 1940s. Uh, uh, and uh, lots of details, a lot of uh, volunteer laborers and everything else. And so th that uh, gives us an idea and of course, also we see in our regular history book uh, a picture of how the church looked and also uh, our artist, Billy Schmidt, 
did a painting there of the original Catholic Church, 1899. Uh, then we move on to later where we cover some of the people. Not everybody's in these booklets that was a member at the time, but most people are there. And in the later books here, we have color pictures of them, which is better yet. And uh, identifying the picture of the family and kids and so on. So that becomes very helpful too. Uh, one of the books that we have, a hardcover one, has on one side of the book about St. Mary's, the other side has about Patch Grove. So that kind of did double duty. By the way, uh, I think both St. John's and St. Mary's are working on an updated membership type thing. Because I know for a while they've been taking pictures of different members of the church. And I think that's something they'll try to come out with when things get back to more normal times. It's a little hard to do things in the way situations are right now. But uh, I know that's all in the planning and they're working on that type of thing. We have uh, next in the group from uh, uh, St. Mary's and uh, Holy Mary, Help of Christians in Glen Haven. The first one that came out there in 1964, the Centennial, that also has a very nice history of Glen Haven itself. So it's handy for a lot of purposes. The next one is very detailed. It was wonderfully done. Lots of color pictures, covers the different priests that were there, sisters. There was a school for a period of time too, Catholic school there. It's all back when there were a lot more smaller families, smaller farms, a lot of people who uh, needed a place. And uh, even today, they're still working hard at uh, finishing up some remodeling on the church there. They do very badly want to keep it going. So again, that's something to be proud of with people when they work so hard to maintain things. And we just found out, not that we have anything here in this group uh, on the table, but uh, St. Charles just finished uh, getting their church kind of remodeled. So that was the big project for them down there. So you see things like that happening every once in a while, and if we're able to help out or attend some fundraisers, it's always good to keep those things in mind. The last one that we have on the table there, St. Lawrence O'Toole, that's in rural Mount Hope area. And that has quite a detailed history there, showing a lot of the groups. And uh, again, like Many of the churches in the past, uh, the, the group of membership was larger in those days. And uh, a lot of things, especially like Sunday schools, I should mention about that. Uh, most churches had some type of catechism or Sunday school services for the young people, for the children. And that was always good there to build a foundation for them and so that they understood more about their particular faith that they belonged to. And so the people that taught and worked in those areas, a lot of times they're pictured in some of these booklets. So it's kind of good, good to go back. It's another place that you can reminisce, maybe find some people that you forgot about or some that maybe you're looking for. You can find some pictures of them and uh, we hope to always keep things updated when people come out, when a group comes out with a new one. Uh, we'll try to get a hold of that. Also for anyone that you didn't see mentioned here, uh, if there's any church or you have a, a reunion or anything that was covered, uh, we'd love to have a copy of that if it's possible. Don't toss things away, see if we can make use of things. So again, uh, another important part of our history collection here 
uh, in the Bloomington Public Library History Room. And also we have some pictures there too, some smaller ones here, of uh, early uh, uh, Lutheran Church in uh, Bagley, and also uh, showing us the picture, a couple pictures there of the church that was in Wild Lucy. And it, just, just, that's just another reminder that little places that maybe there's not hardly anything left, but while losing any of these little places, Brockville and so on, these were all important places and uh, over the years. So we, we need to do what we can, try to save what we can from the past here, keep the memories going.